Hello everybody, my name is Julie Mann. I am a professional network marketer, I'm an actor, and I'm also an EFT practitioner. And I'm really, really excited because today I'm having a conversation with Katie Neves. Hi, Katie. Hi, Julie. You might recognize Katie, or you might not, but Katie is a photographer, a filmmaker, and a trans ambassador. Now, Katie, I know that you've worked for over 30 years as a photographer, haven't you? And you, you've been very well respected and you've actually even been to Buckingham Palace a couple of times and photographed the Queen. And I know that you were even at Princess Diana's funeral taking pictures as well. I was, yeah. You were living as a man, Martin Neves, for 48 years. And then you decided to come out as being transgender in 2018. And you appeared on TV and you were you know, in the papers. <laughs> So really, how hard was it for you to announce that you were trans and why did you choose to do it in such a public way? Right. Um, it was it was hard. Um, the, 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 the problem was that my my photography business um, was and still is named after my old male name, Martin. So it's called Martin Neves Photography and Film. And because I'd been it had been an established brand for um, 22 years then when I came out I felt that I couldn't change the name of the business because I could you know when I changed my name to Katie I thought oh well you know nobody would know who I was so I thought well I, I for, from a business point of view I felt I had to keep that the same but in order to do that I'd have to come out very publicly as being trans myself and, and, and continue to do that and so what I did was I, I, I made a coming out video and I put it on all my social media and, uh, and, and, and sent it to all my clients. And I was absolutely petrified. It was really, really hard doing it because everything was relying on it. My, my, whole, my whole reputation, my livelihood, everything rested on the reaction to that one video. Um, but I was amazed. I was very pleasantly surprised that I was just, ha I had so many uh, messages of support um, and, and uh, it was just incredible. I felt so loved and of course then it, <clears throat> it got picked up in the, well initially with the local media and so I started doing interviews for local radio and newspapers and then it, it sort of went a bit further and then it sort of went, went on to national radio and then television and, and then national newspapers and magazines. And so all of a sudden I'd become this trans ambassador. And so that's how it happened really. <laughs> I'm a professional gobby trans woman. <laughs> <laughs> I love that about you. One of the reasons that I was really, really excited to talk to you, Katie, is that to be honest with you, I know very little about you know, transgender and you know, there might be some people who are watching and, you know, they're, they're like me. They don't really know very much. So what would you want us to know? OK, several things. Um, one is that um, there's no choice in being trans. So, uh, you know, I hate it when people describe it as a lifestyle choice. There's no choice in it at all. It's, it's you either are or you're not. It's, you know, it's just uh, it's the same as your sexuality. You know, you're either heterosexual or you're not heterosexual or you're, you're something else and, and that's fine and and so that that but you, you have no choice about that it, it, you know so it's just who you are so that's that's a very important thing i didn't want to be trans i fought against it i you know because i i you know had so much to lose by you know by by admitting to myself i was trans but in the end the urge to um to, to live my truth was just so unbelievably strong and so I, I had to do it um so that's that's yes that's the first thing um another thing uh, is just respect people's pronouns you know when people and, and when people you know you might have known somebody for for a, for many years and, and called them by certain pronouns and certain name and also and then they're telling you oh, yeah please call me by this new name and, and use different pronouns and yes it might be difficult for you to do it but at least try because that really does validate them. And, and when you don't try, then that's really hurtful. You know, if you're being misgendered, it is horrible. Um, and if you do try, but then sometimes you, you just, you slip up and then you call them by their old pronouns or by an old name, then most trans people are fine. As long as you, you as long as you try most of the time. <laughs> and if you, but if you just slip up and, and, and you just, just apologize and move on, don't make a big deal out of it. Um, and that's the best way to, to, to approach it. 
Um, trying to think what what else. Other things, other things like language, like some some people um, describe trans people as transgenders. Well, you know, that's that's just it's be like describing gay people as gays, you know, a bunch of gays, a bunch of transgenders. It's it's not very nice, you know. We're trans trans people or transgender people, that sort of thing. Um, other words like um, like transgenderism. It's not it's not so, it's not an ism. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's it's not an ism at all. It's you know, you are transgender, <laughs> and and it's like. Um, so I've heard some people say, "Oh, transgendering." Well, you can't be transgendering. <laughs> you know, you 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 can be transitioning. You are transgender, and then you're transitioning. Um, yeah. You know, so um, there's, there's things like that. That language is is very important. I guess that's the thing that a lot of people yeah. are concerned they're going to get it wrong, and they're hmm. they're you know almost reluctant to say anything at all. Yeah, yeah. So some people are, and that's partly what, what I do with with the work that I do with my trans awareness training. You know, I help people get over those fears and and help to to put it right. So I've got a whole load of things that sort of, I, I tell people um, that just to help them along the way. Do people ever start? You know, call you keep calling you Martin. You know, how <laughs> did that did that happen? Yeah. Well, I had a really it was weird actually the way it happened because um, I. I admitted to myself that I was trans well, on the 11th of January 2018, remember it well. <laughs> um, and then I came out very publicly on, um, on the 26th of April 2018. But then I, I only started living full time as female on the 2nd of September 2018. So I had quite a few months between April and September when I'd announced this is what I was going to do and this is who I um, who this is the real me but I was still working um, as Martin and presenting myself as male um, but everybody knew that this transition was going to be starting and this this was the, this was the plan and what was happening is that I, I I always had the plan that it was going to be September just because of the certain amount of work that I had on that it just worked for me that September was going to be the right time for me to to start living full-time as, as Katie um, and so my original plan was to come out maybe a few weeks before that and then just do it quite quickly. But I did a straw poll of some other trans friends and, and I asked them what would be the best way of doing it? You know, should I do it that way or should I come out sooner? Um, and they pretty much unanimously, they all sort of said, oh, come out sooner rather than later. Give people a chance to get their head around it. So I did, but I think I left two, it was a too big a gap, I think, between April and September, because I had this massive gap where I was going to business networking meetings and on jobs and things. And, you know, some people would be calling me Martin. Some people would be calling me Katie. Some people would call me Matey. <laughs> and, and there was a lot of, hello, uh, you. <laughs> there was a lot of that going on. So it was a really confusing time all, all around. Um, and certainly... If I was to do it again, I would leave a much shorter gap between the two, definitely. So that was a bit of a mistake. But it, you know, <laughs> I've never, I've never come out before. <laughs> well and truly out now, though, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> so I, you probably just touched on it, really. But um, you say that sex and gender are not linked. Can can you explain what you mean by that? Absolutely. Well, there's, well, that's uh, actually three three things. So, so the sex, which is what's between your legs. So, so that based on your sex, your physical sex characteristics, and it's a sex that it's basically assigned to you at birth based on your physical sex characteristics. And sometimes the doctors and midwives get that wrong. So, there's, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of intersex people around. Um, so, uh, you know, where it's where it's not all, always obvious, or they might have. Um, genitals one way but then so, so they might for instance they might have um, they might have a vagina but then they might have internal testes because they can't see that when they actually sex them so so there's a lot of that but I know that's a completely separate thing to to being trans but it's worth pointing out that it's, it's one of the it's sex is something that is assigned to people so there's sex and then there's gender which is how you feel in your head and your heart of who you are and it's something that you you just know, you know who you are. You don't need to look at your genitals just to know who you are. And it's just, as, I, I liken it to, 
being well, what are you left or right handed? Right handed. How do you know you're right handed? It's just what I do automatically. I don't think about it. Feels right, doesn't it? Yeah. Same thing. It just feels right. And it's just that's exactly how it feels. You know, it just feels right. And and if you try and force yourself to be left handed, it feels wrong. You can train yourself to be left handed. It's weird. But it feels wrong, doesn't it? It's not you. Yeah. So it's just that it's just the same sort of way. So those 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 two things. But then there's a third thing, who you're attracted to. Well, you know, who you're attracted to has got nothing to do with who you are. You know, it's so um you know so for me who i'm attracted to has been one constant in my life so i've always been attracted to women and i'm still attracted to women so previously i was labeled as a heterosexual man but now i'm labeled as a lesbian but it feels no different to me it feels exactly the same as it always have it has you know it's perfectly natural and you know so <laughs> I, it's just not an issue and then and it's just it's like all completely separate there is actually a, there is actually a fourth one in in, in your um, how you present yourself as well because some people present in a different way but they're, they're the three main the three main ones. Brilliant. Okay, so I know I've looked at some statistics and I know that actually forty eight percent of transgender have attempted suicide. Mm. Age, at least at least once, yeah. Eighty four percent have thought about it. Did mm. you ever have you ever contemplated that? No, I'm I'm one of the lucky sixteen percent. I, I I never have. No, um, yeah. I, I but I'm surprised that those stats aren't higher. To be honest, because um, most of my trans friends have attempted suicide. Um, it's very very common in the trans world. It's um, things, but I think a lot of it is just the stigma uh, f for, from the pressure that's been put on on, on us by society through a, a lack of awareness and a lack of acceptance and so that's why i think it's so important i'm doing the work that i'm doing just to show that well two, two things I'm, I'm on a mission really two, two things one is to reach out to other trans people to let them know that it's okay to be trans because it really is okay to be trans <laughs> yeah you can be trans and be happy yeah <laughs> um but also to educate the general public and to show the general public that trans people are just ordinary people who want to be safe, loved and happy, just like everyone else. And that's it. That's all there is to it. It's simple. Basic requirement. It's simple. That's it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what would you say, Katie, was the hardest part or the most challenging aspect of changing from male to female? Well, first, the hardest part was admitting it to myself. That was the, that was the hardest part. That, that, that was the, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm mean, obviously telling my wife that was a, <laughs> that was a biggie. Um, but then actual, the actual part of the transition, um, I think the voice is the hardest bit and I certainly haven't got it yet. Um, I know you interviewed Priscilla Morris recently and, and she's done some work with me. Um, and I've still got quite a way to go with it. I, to be honest, I haven't, I haven't put as much work into it as I probably should have done. I think a lot of it is beca because I am so out. I mean, I couldn't be more out if I tried, really. So, I'm, <laughs> yeah, there's a billboard coming out soon. <laughs> <laughs> um, because of that, I'm so out. Everyone knows I'm trans. Um, so, in some ways, it sort of takes away the need to sort of try too much and what when i the, the only times i tend to try more with my voice is when i'm in a situation where i'm talking to somebody i'm having maybe a short conversation where I've, it might be a shop assistant or somebody i'm just having a chat to a short transaction and i've got no intention of coming out to them and that that's the time that i will actually try more um whereas like now you know i'm trans we're having a conversation about it so there's no need to be a, to to, to no need to try it and i think well actually um the whole journey is about authenticity and this is my authentic voice i mean it actually used to be deeper than it is now i i mean if i let me try and take my voice back to how it used to used to be hang on um okay so it used to be down there so it used to so i used to talk much more from my chest right from down there so um yeah, whereas i'm talking much more from my head now so it's gone it's gone up a bit so but it's still got, I know it's still got some way to go. So I tend, I tend not to get misgendered when people see me, you know, face to face. 
maybe because they're frightened of me. I don't know. <laughs> Um, but I, I think because the, the visual aspect tends to take over, but on the, on the phone, I get misgendered all the time. Uh, um, so, so yeah, the voice is definitely the hardest. And one of those things that, that, that's from, for male to female, so for trans women, which is what I am. So from male to female, um, the voice is not affected by the hormones. So basically I'm on a hormone treatment. So I'm on, on, uh, on, on testosterone blockers and then also estrogen so hrt just as as many women you know cisgender women so non-trans women mm -hmm. um are on when going through menopause so same stuff but that doesn't affect your voice because because i've already gone through male puberty that broke my voice well i can't unbreak it so it's purely down to training just i mean you can have operations on it but i want to avoid that if i possibly can help it so i just need to just do more work with, with training it but for um for trans men so for people who are transitioning from female to male um their voice breaks with the with the testosterone that they're, they, they're given and so so their voices do naturally fall they sometimes have to have some voice coaching just to try and find that voice um because they're used to talking from their head because women tend to talk from their head more where there's less resonance and, and men tend to talk from the chest so you've, yeah well i'm your accent an actor so you'll know you'll know all about voice and everything but i think the classic case was um was um, margaret thatcher you know when she first started in politics she had this very high squeaky voice and then she realized that she needed to sort of to really cut through and get through to to men and everything and so she actually deepened her voice she had voice coaching to deepen the voice and she had a very deep voice in the end and that was a deliberate thing um, so she found that, that deep voice, but obviously nothing to do with being trans, but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, but it's interesting. Though, isn't it it yeah. is. And it must be such a relief when you, when you're not actually, you know, doing that, when you're not, you know, consciously deciding to speak. In a yeah. Or... But it's, it's funny. I can do it when I'm, I, I'm at the stage where like, if I'm reading a passage or something, I can do it and I can, so reading or something is a lot easier to do it because it's so much more controlled. Whereas when you're having a, a spontaneous conversation like this, I'm thinking much more about what I'm saying than how I'm saying it. Whereas what I'll know what I've made it when I can do it subconsciously. And I think already subconsciously I'm talking much more from the head, but I've got a lot further to go. I know. I know that. <laughs> I don't well, need to be told. Great. And anyway, <laughs> so to really, you know, I mean, without kind of um, overstating it, being trans is a pretty, pretty huge deal, isn't it, Katie? You know, it's not just dealing with the right. emotional aspect. You know, the impact psychologically. You know, the, the physical surgery, but also the financial um, impact of that. All of that. Absolutely. So, um, you know, I happen to be happy with my gender, so I can only imagine what it must be like to go through what you've been through. So are there any words that you can begin to give, give me and the people watching so that we can have some understanding of what mm. that process was like for you? Mm. What, in terms of the, the, the financial? Um, well, the, whole, the whole, you know, if, if you've got time for all of that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, in, in terms of, yeah, in terms of how I'm doing that. So the, yeah, the financial aspect. So I'm looking looking at, so certainly with my business, so I, I'm self-employed. So for me, I, there was no, no law, um, there was no law there to protect me from discrimination. And so I, that was why I did this coming out video and, and, and I did all that. It was a business protection thing. That's how, that's how it started, purely as that um because i was so worried about my clients having an issue with it and just walking away and they could have done they could so easily have done it. and some of them did i did lose some clients to it so so yes it has has hit me um but I, I, the way that i've looked at it I think well actually yes i missed the money <laughs> but i don't want to work for anybody who doesn't get it and doesn't you know i i, I want to work for nice people <laughs> <laughs> yeah um and then what's happened is that the ones that, that weren't very nice then well they walked away well <laughs> stuff it to them i don't care <laughs> they can go yeah but it's opened the way for nice people to come into my life yeah. so you know it's and and also it's opened up the way for me doing cool to be trans running cool to be trans um a trans awareness training business and, and public speaking business so it it's opened that up the way for doing that you see so so it, it Good things do happen from 
from from loss yeah um absolutely yeah i but, mean actually, i think that to be honest with you we all want to work with people that we like don't we yeah and I, I was about just about to ask you mm. about cool to be trans which i know you set up in 2019 so can you just tell us about that yeah well it just happened from what what happened was that from the coming out video and then doing all the media um, appearances and everything, every time I did a media appearance, I'd get contacted by other trans people who were saying that, you know, what I'd said had helped. And, um, and often, you know, and it's still happening now, you know, I, I, I give people some support and, um, and then it's great actually just seeing them, you know, you see them where they're all, often they can be in, in self-denial to begin with. And then you just give them a little bit of support and a little coaching and, and, and then they, you see them blossom. And then off they go and they're fine and they're great. And it, it's, it's brilliant. It's absolutely lovely to see that. But there's one person particularly contacted me, really struck a chord. And it was a lady whose, whose son uh, was having gender issues when he was going through puberty. And she, he was being treated for it at a gender clinic for children. And she said that she was so worried that at the time that he would either be bullied or he'd self-harm or attempt to suicide as we've already discussed it's a very common thing to do so she was really what right to be worried and she said if only there was someone like you out there at the time that would let him know that it's okay to be trans because it really is you know and, and 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 that really struck a chord with me i thought i've really got to do some good with this so i thought well what can i do i thought i'll 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 vlog my whole journey and just um bring people along on the journey with me and make it accessible um and, and just demystify the whole process um, and just tell people exactly what it is and what it isn't. Just so, so that, yeah, because I think often, I, I, I think a lot of bigotry and fear and hatred comes from a, f a fear of the unknown. And so if you can take that unknown away by educating people, then you're doing a good thing. Because then the more education that there is, then the, the more um acceptance there will be the more acceptance there'll be the easier it would be for other trans people to well a admit it to themselves that they're trans and b you know come out and then live their lives in in, in peace and just be happy just live their truth you know I mean, it's just because it feels absolutely amazing to be able to live your truth it really does it's just it's so freeing it's incredible yeah brilliant okay so how can people find out more about you about what you do um how how would they do that Okay, probably the best thing is to go, to, I suppose my website is probably the, 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 the first port of call, which is um, calltobetrans.co.uk. And it's the number two and the letter B in that. So it's call and then two B trans.co.uk. Um, or, you yeah, know, look, I'm, I'm on all the social media. I'm everywhere. You can't get rid of me. You know, look, up, <laughs> look, look up call to be trans, you know, or, uh, or Katie Neves. I'm, I'm, I'm there. <laughs> You don't get rid of me that easily. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. So finally, Katie, what words would you like to leave us with? I would say um, for, for people that are struggling with their gender identity, um, don't be afraid to explore it because yeah, yeah, you might not want to admit who you really are, but if you can find the strength to do that, then it will be worth it because yes it's not an easy journey it's a it's a it's a painful journey on the way and there's a lot of pain loss and heartache along the way but ultimately you'll end up being happier if you can live your truth so that's what i'd say certainly to to, to trans people and to non-trans people I, I would say you know get get yourself educated about it if you're if you're worried about what you you know what you can or can't say then you know have, just go for some trans awareness training um yeah i'll do it for you <laughs> <laughs> plug plug um yeah just but just get some training and but it, it, you know it doesn't take long to do it i mean i i you know i my my trans awareness training course is only three hours and i pack a lot in in that time um, and I could I could do shorter hour long versions, but the the three hour ones it's very comprehensive and and, and you, it's amazing. You, there's so many things that'll come out. I go through lots of different terms and you know things. That, so and the whole journey and typical journeys that um, that, that trans people take because everybody's journey is different. So um, and also the the other thing I ought to explain actually because it's something we didn't touch on is that um, what causes it's, it's um, a condition called gender dysphoria. 
which is a great feeling of unease between the difference um, between how you feel in your head and your heart and your sex characteristics. And it, and it really is awful. It really does take over you. And gender dysphoria is one of those things that um, is, uh, it can vary in strength and it very often increases over time. And that's what happened with me. Uh, Cause it was, at, uh, I've always had it, you know, right from an early age, you know, from about three or four, um, but it increased over time. And I'd, it's, I was certainly unprepared for it to increase as it did when it did. Um, but that's what causes it. And it's, it's, it's not something that you choose. So I think it's just important for people to realise that that's, that's what it is. Absolutely. Katie, thank you so much. I've loved talking to you. Thank you. No, you're welcome. No, thanks, thanks very much for having me on.